Hey gang, Dustin here with Bearhawk Studio, and today I'm going to show you a whole bunch of woodworking projects that you can use as gifts. Not just for the holidays, but all year long. Let's get to it. We're going to kick things off with some quick and easy bottle openers, both wall mounted and handheld. I started by cutting out the backs from a couple different kinds of scrap wood for the three different wall mounted variations I'm going to show you today. I filled in any noticeable cracks with black CA glue. All of these are 12 to 14 inches tall to leave room for mounting screws, bottle openers, and cap catchers. You can make these as fancy as you want and add all kinds of details. But to keep things simple, I just did a half inch round over on the front faces then sand it down to 220 grit. I also pre-drilled the mounting holes and used a countersink cutter so the screws will sit flush once it's mounted. Then I applied three coats of finish to prep for final assembly. For these first two, I used a black and a bronze bottle opener, along with matching metal bins to catch the bottle caps. The instructions that came with the bins said that they should be attached seven inches below the bottle opener. I usually package these with a couple of three inch screws so it's quick and easy for them to mount right next to their favorite beverage dispenser. The other two wall mounted variations are constructed pretty much the same, but they use magnets to catch the caps. One, I mounted the magnet in the back and the other, I mount the magnet on the front. If you're going to do the hidden magnet, you got to find some pretty heavy duty ones that can pull through the wood. But the front facing ones are pretty much straightforward. And that is three easy wall mounted bottle openers. But if you prefer something a little more discreet and portable, Check out these handheld bottle openers of my own design. I normally cut the blanks for my handheld bottle openers on the CNC machine, then clean them up on the bandsaw and shape each one individually with the sanders. The main two that I normally like to make, I call the ice cream scoop and the fridge puck. But you could use a bandsaw or a jigsaw to build pretty much any shape you want. If you do use a bandsaw or jigsaw, I recommend drilling out the holes for the bottle opener beforehand just to make it easier to keep everything lined up. I buy these bottle opener coins and each one is about 1 and 9 16 inch around. So to get them flush mounted, you would use the same sized Forstner bit about an eighth inch deep, then use a 1 inch Forstner bit in the same hole to make room for the cap. Once the basic shapes are cut out and the holes are pre-drilled, I do the final shaping with the belt sander and then slick them down with the orbital and a sanding sponge for any hard to reach places. I don't think these really need to use a food safe finish, so I typically just use a few coats of spray lacquer. At this point, you could do any personalization options or match up different coin colors with different wood species for unique options. Then, just attach the coin and glue in the magnets. These bottle openers are always a big hit. Not just because they're conversation starters, but they're useful and thoughtful gifts that the recipient will use for many years to come. Next up are these amazing cocktail smokers that couldn't be any easier to build. Like the bottle openers, I normally cut these on the CNC, but you could cut these with pretty much anything as long as the finished shape is large enough to sit flat and cover the entire top of a cocktail glass. The important part of this design is the hole in the center. 
you essentially need a three quarter inch hole that stops one quarter inch from the other side of the material. Then a half inch hole all the way through on the same spot. This creates a ledge that we'll use to put a screen filter in later. Then I'll usually soften the edges and sand them down to 220 grit before I oil them with a food safe cutting board oil. Once it's dry, you install the filter and it's ready to go. I usually package these with a torch, some food safe wood chips, and a little plastic baggie with extra filters. What a great gift to help your friend or family member take their home cocktails to the next level. Last year, I was gifted an amazing set of chef's knives, which led me to design this attractive and practical knife block that can be customized for any space. I started with this really powerful knife block that I found online and laid it out on a piece of walnut. It's extremely important that the back of the block be very close to flush with the magnet's casing and that the front of the block be very thin. If you don't have a CNC, I suggest hollowing it out with a router and then sanding down each side until it all lines up. I'm personalizing this block for my own kitchen but you could do all kinds of cool stuff with these. I used a two-part epoxy to glue the block into the walnut. Then you just mount the plate to the wall and the magnet does the rest. No matter how you decide to customize your own blocks, this is the way you should be storing your precious cutlery. And speaking of knives, check out these awesome bread bows or bread saws. I'm pretty excited about these because they originated right here in Appalachia. Normally you would customize these to be the preferred depth of your slice of bread. But for me, sometimes I like thin and sometimes I like Tennessee toast. So mine's pretty wide. Let me know down in the comments if you're interested in printable plans or printable templates for this or any of the other projects in this video today. And if any of these projects have given you good ideas, atomic elbow that like button for me. The concept is pretty straightforward, and I could see some of you master craftsmen getting extremely detailed with it. I drew up a simple outline and cut it out with the CNC, then ran all sides across a half inch roundover bit, except the faces where the blades will mount. Then I used the orbital sander to knock down any hard edges and ran over all surfaces with a 220 sanding sponge. These will be directly touching food, so definitely use a food safe mineral oil. The blades do come in a few different lengths, so whether you want to use my design or your own, triple check that you've got that measurement correct before you ruin a whole batch like I did. Also, I suggest attaching the bottom of the blade first, then marking the top of the blade and pre-drilling the screw just slightly further away, so when you do put the screw in, it pulls the blade tight. I couldn't, for the life of me, figure out how to tie a clean and attractive leather knot. So instead, I used these hog rings and pliers to close the loop. Then I cut off the excess with scissors to tidy up. I'd never used one of these until I built one, and now we use this thing almost every day for fresh bread or bread that we buy at the market. Either way, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Wait. As you already know, woodworkers love to take boards and make other boards. Cutting boards, charcuterie boards, we just love boards. So to wrap up this video, I'm gonna go over some variations on those boards that you've probably never thought of, but aren't gonna to wanna to miss. This first one's gonna seem easy. You take this $6 Lazy Susan and attach it to the bottom of one of those boards, and now you've got an amazing centerpiece for the center of a dining table or coffee table. But even better, I've found that the people I love to give these gifts the most with the Lazy Susan are people who play board games. Historically, half the table has to look at the opposite side of whatever board game you're playing. But if you set one of these up on an appropriately large size board, now everybody can get a great view of the game. And all my gamer friends love them. Next, you can get a decanter like this and a set of nice glasses for next to nothing. And if you pair that with one of your beautiful boards or a Lazy Susan, then you've just leveled up somebody's beverage station. And for the high class folks on your gift list, 
pair a nice set of cheese knives with a small custom shaped board and they'll love you forever. Or even better, pair a beautiful board with one of those amazing bread bows you just made. And one that really comes in handy, take a wide cutting board, add some basic cabinet handles, and now you've got a serving tray. And feel free to mix and match any of these ideas all together for gift sets. I sincerely hope that you found one of these useful, or at the very least, it inspired you to make something even better. Thanks so much for watching. Now go make some gifts or watch this video. Mm -hmm.